Mary McAnally from Croquet Gang. I'm talking to Kaiyo Kaiyo Nani. Yes. Thank you very much. Can you introduce yourself because you're here from the Hawaiian delegation? Yes, aloha. My name is Kaiyo Lani Odom. I'm here um, from Oahu and my work is all around food and birthing and culture and health. You've got a poster up here. What are you, what are you, the, it's the research about you. This is our um, program, just birthing a nation, to build a new nation that uses all of our cultural practices around birthing from birth. And so for many of us, we had to go back in and learn about our traditional medicines and our traditional foods and our practices at a, a, a older age. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to build strong parents, build strong um, passing down of traditions of culture, eating the food, using the medicine, using our massage techniques, knowing how to make everything right in the world as you bring this baby into the world and that becomes their birth start and they can go on and to lead healthier lives because they've had a good start in life. You've also presented on nutrition, I think, mm. food, food and food security. Yeah. And so we um, we also have a program called Ehuola. We recruit third to fifth graders, but with their families have to come with them, and they have to commit to coming to a family dinner once a month where we show cooking techniques, we explore different types of foods, try and bring in traditional foods as templates. We do an exercise class once a month. We do a land-based class where they come and work on the land and learn how to plant and all the things that go with that. We do a culture-based class once a month. So the family has to commit to coming to at least one or two things a month. And then during the intercession, we take the kids and we teach them all about traditional methods of food preparation, connecting them to um, all of our, our sacred spaces, our sacred knowledge, our food. And so in hopes that we build strong bodies, we build strong um, spirits, and we build strong foundations for them. Can you give a sense of, of how that's actually working out? Have you, are you evaluating, you know, what, how are you measuring well, we your success? We evaluate, and so even though, um, and yes, yeah, so the ones that have been with us for the longest time, four and five years, even though I've never talked to the parents about weight, they're losing weight, or um, they are exercising more. But what we really focus in on what are changes being made as a family. So many of them have their own garden. Maybe many of them are more prideful in who they are as people and in, in the Hawaiian um, population. Many of them are now interested in what's going on in their community. They're volunteering at different community things. One mother is telling me that her son is now a better brother to his three younger brothers and that he understands when his feelings are inappropriate or when he's saying the wrong thing. That to me is a broad spectrum of health. It's not about what's often seen as you know the BMIs and the weight loss and, and the blood pressures and the blood glucose. Not that we don't have to pay attention to those numbers, but we as indigenous people have been talking for many years about how sick we are, how high our chronic diseases are. So if you hear those over a number of years, that's unhealthy in itself. We have to talk about our pride. We have to talk about our resilience. We have to talk about all of the things that come from our past that can lead us into the future. That needs to be the forefront of what we focus on. And yes, we'll pay attention to the statistics because we want to change them but that shouldn't be what we talk about that shouldn't define who we are as a people yeah can i i'll probably come back to that if we can but um climate change i was talking to one of your colleagues and that's becoming an issue in terms of mosquitoes i believe are there other impacts you're seeing what, what are your concerns there Climate change along with loss of land. You want to practice as a people where land was very important to you. And so the climate change is definitely changing the, the temperature of our water and that's affecting the growing of our kalo. And, um, but really, it's the loss of land that's most affecting our people that we don't have, we can't go out and do our cultural practices. I teach our, our birthing mothers our practices to bury our ievia, our placenta. What happens when you no longer have ancestral lands to bury that placenta? And so I'm teaching them to go back to their traditional practices, but our loss of land has severely affected our livelihood, our, our cultural connections, our our ties to the land that go back generations, and that's really um, detrimental to us as a people. That takes us into a rights and a political sphere. I'm wondering if you wanted to comment about the news that Donald Trump is the, now the president-elect of the US. How would that impact on, on the indigenous people of Hawaii? Well, being that um, Trump has really no interest in the indigenous people of Hawaii, and has been pretty sexist and racist in his remarks. It, it's, um, 
it's actually quite a shock to all of us that he is in there. But, you know, the indigenous people have the knowledge and we can't, we've gone through adversity and we've gone through, our queen was illegally overthrown in 1893. And so while they say we're annexed to, Hawaii, to the United States, we are actually, our queen was overthrown and we were taken illegally. So we are illegally occupied by the United States. But we've faced adversity and um, we're going to continue to face adversity. Trump is, is detrimental to all of us, but we have within our own knowledge and foundation ways to persevere and ways to be resilient. And I really believe the indigenous people of the world are the one that are going to bring us up out of this situation. And one, just on that, having been at this conference, what's what, what's been a big takeaway for you? Um, that we we all have, like I said, within us the knowledge and the foundation that's going to help our people across the world. We need to be a little bit more connected. We need to help each other out. But I can see from all our indigenous cultures, we're facing some of the same adversities, but we're also thriving in other areas. We are um, using our cultural knowledge, our kukuna, our elders, to move forward in this world, to create healthier children, to create healthier generations. And it's really been just uplifting to be around so many indigenous people that have great knowledge, that carry great history, that tell great stories, that sing great songs. You know, you're in this work and sometimes you think like you're just in this little cocoon of your own and doing stuff and it's really nice to connect with others that are also doing great work and that are also here to save the world. And a stand-up presentation, has there been one for you? Um, you know, what I've taken away from all of this is infusing music throughout a conference. I mean, I love um, Chief, um, the Chief yesterday from Canada because I didn't know that history and it struck me to my core. And then, so to hear the uplifting songs of the children at the end of the day was beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so very much. Sorry. For talking. Well, no.